what will your legacy be when it's all said and done? What did I write about you? That you were a great player? What did I write about that you were a great leader? You inspired people. Now we've got even a bigger problem as Devin Gardner comes limping off the field. It was a lot of pain. Ankle sprains, they can be pretty bad. Just tried to hurry up and get to the sideline as fast as I could, you know, and, and get it checked out to see what was wrong. I didn't know if I would be able to go back in the game. You know, uh, I don't know if the trainers will let me and You know, I don't know if I would be uh, physically capable to do it. He's just totally distraught that here he is in his senior season. He's injured himself to the point that he's not able to go but I just had to stay in it for my teammates because it's really not about me. You see him uh, really still in pain. Wow. Yeah. They needed me, and if I can stand up and, and I can still throw him, I feel like I can help the team. He can't move. Watch him stand in there and take the hit. What a gutsy throw. You know, the way we won it was pretty special. What we will remember more than anything else about this game was the way Gardner limped back onto the field after being injured. This year has not gone the way uh, I like it to go in any way. I've never been benched in my life. That was that was something that uh, I always remember. It hurt. It was it was something that really hurt. And through the week, my whole attitude was just trying to make it seem like I was going to be playing and be there for my teammates and be the same guy and not change in any way. So I, I kind of tricked myself into thinking I was playing. So it didn't hit me until uh, Saturday morning. I woke up and it's like, <laughs> you're not playing in this game. I'm from Detroit. It's a different place, man. It makes you tough. Just being able to see a lot of, a lot of things that, you know, kids may not need to see. It's not easy to get out of Detroit and do great things. All the adversity I faced while living in Detroit, it made me who I am today being able to come out of that and I feel like I can be the, the beacon of light you know that you know it, it really is possible you can you can make something out of nothing just driving around about to be on the highway headed to old Inkster High and so driving Inkster is like from my house is 45 minutes so let's just come pick us up take about an hour and a half to get to school we had to stop at other stops like on the west side of Detroit that was a long ride every day to school I haven't been here in a long time. A very long time. That's crazy. This is where our weight room was supposed to be inside of this garage. So we used to sit in that hallway over there and do like plate raises, like 45 pound plates, and like, like sit against the wall. That was our squats. And just hold it. It was pretty, uh, wasn't like the ideal weight program, <laughs> but it helped, it helped us, I guess. If you live in Inkster, where, where do you go to school? Like, that's kind of, that's not, that's not, that's not good for the city, you know, in a city that already has, like, crime and stuff, and it's just like, like, this is, this is a lot of kids' way out, you know, playing football here and get a chance to go to school. I don't know. My mom is one of the strongest people I know, and I feel like a lot of my strength comes from her. I saw her struggle, and it's kind of hard when you're younger to watch that, and you can't really do anything because you're a kid. So it was five of us, and uh, she raised us all together, and she found a way. I don't know how. I mean, maybe she has, like, some kind of cape in her closet. She's, like, a superhero or something, but she found a way. And stop by and see mom in Detroit. It was great, you know, don't get to go home as much, you know, we always got practice and class, you know, stuff like that, you know, mom's working, so it's hard to get home. <laughs> Hello. It's good to see you. What's up? <laughs> Impressive picture. Yeah. I don't know how many two-year-olds can walk around with a helmet on. Yeah, we were two years old on this picture. 
when your brothers came home from practice and right after we snapped this picture, that's when you fell over sideways because the helmet was too heavy. You didn't have to tell for that. <laughs> I know it was hard on her because I was the most well-behaved kid in the world. I'm sure I made it really, really tough on her. That's why I worked so hard to try to give her a better life. It makes you feel so proud that you're not hearing, oh, your son did this. You're hearing, your son is awesome. He's at U of M and he's doing this. That is the best feeling that a parent can have. The Michigan-Michigan State game is a big deal. It's one of the greatest robberies, I think, in the country. Michigan State was my first offer, so I can't wait to get a chance to play them again. There's no rivalry like an in-state rivalry. I don't think this rivalry takes a backseat to any anywhere. The storyline, how healthy is Devin Gardner, and what can the Spartans do to slow him down? Under center, he's got two tight ends in the lineup. Straight back, give to Devin Smith. The flea flicker back to Devin Gardner. Gardner in trouble, and he'll be sacked. Got to give Devin some time in the pocket. He's getting pressure, and he'll be sacked. This Michigan State team can really pin their ears back <laughs> and make things happen. Gardner gets the snap. Throws over the middle, and the ball is caught. Intercepted. is probably four down territory. Third and five from the Michigan State 10 for the Wolverines. Gardner takes the snap. Straight back to throw. Looks, he's throwing in the corner to Funches. Funches has it and dropped it. That was a touchdown pass that Devin Funches had and then dropped. Fourth down, Wolverines. Here's a blitz. Gardner to throw. He runs. He's down to the 10. Up to the four yard line he will not get it and the Michigan State Spartans will take over and what a play that was clock ticking with 203 left to play the Spartans leading 28 to 11 here's Langford he bends it back to the left he's gonna go inside the 20 to the 15 and down to the 10 Langford starts in motion left and off the Jeremy running for his right Ran the football, stopped the run. The big plays started to happen in the game. And it was sheer domination, guys. You can call it anything you want. It was sheer domination. You know, throwing the stake down in our in our backyard out here and coming out there like they're all that. You know, it got shoved up up, shoved it up. It got shoved the last uh, the last minute and a half. And we were not gonna pull off of that. 